friends, welcome. The camera adjusted, probably have dogs jealous in the background if you're not visiting with us, but hi. Welcome back to Vivid Buffalo Studios um, and Mindful Minutes. And we do have a couple of virtual paint classes at the end of February and then early March, watercolor classes. So there's a February uh, Vivid Buffalo Eventbrite is where you can buy tickets and get more information and see a picture of the painting. I'll include a link here. Um, I want to say it's February 27th and March 11th. But I'll include the link so then things are accurate. Um, <laughs> because that's just off the top of my head. And we have a lot going on, always. So one of the things that we have going on last night, um, I took the Spirit of Buffalo logo with the red, white, and blue, and I made it represent the colors of love with, um, I actually took a palette that was just a really beautiful photograph of raspberries, and I um, picked colors from that photo, and I dropped it into the Spirit of Buffalo, to represent Valentine's Day, but also like just love. And that's the idea is to either from an event, a month, whatever the color representative comes from, take that and put it into our Buffalo logo in the spirit of Buffalo. So I did the, um, the reds, the pinks, the whites, the peaches. It just It's a very nice logo that I will be putting on the same kind of gear and putting on some yoga pants, of course, and I'm super excited for that. Um, and I can't wait to get those in. So once I have the design up and running for purchase, I'll start pushing that out. And we have another idea for February too that I'll be working on tonight. Um, so we're in February and I'll make sure to finish that tonight and get that out uh, to everyone as well. So two new designs for February. We're already working on March designs and um, really just plotting some really cool designs out throughout the year and it's a lot of fun. I um, I love updating the logo and um, I look forward to pushing that out. I also talked to a photographer today um, who may be interested in doing photo shoot um, for the new clothing line. So more to come on that um, because that's been really successful and a lot of fun and something that I've wanted to do for a long time. And I feel like um, the red, white, and blue spirit of Buffalo was just the start of it. It really was, and there's so much we can spin off this design, so um, super excited about that. So art classes, clothes. Um, let's get right to the reading, because <laughs> I looked at the title and I was like, no, <laughs> but yes, it's true. So today's reading, Journey to the Heart by Melody Beatty. Today's reading is Break Through Your Resistance. We sometimes resist a new lesson. And what we resist the most is likely to be what we most need to learn. Our lessons usually come with inner conflict, the action we should be taking, 
the idea we should be learning is sometimes hidden behind a wall of resistance. There's a border, a barrier we need to cross to get into that heart of the lesson. Most times that barrier is within us. Lessons require us to let go of old feelings, old beliefs. If they didn't, they wouldn't be lessons. We'd already know them. Sometimes the very thing we feel guiltiest about doing, the place we're most resistant to visiting, the person we're most convinced we shouldn't contact, or the behavior we're tormenting ourselves most about is exactly what we need to be doing. And more often than not, the lesson we're learning is not what we think it is. And we need to embrace the surprise element of life. Embrace the mystery of life as it unfolds. As the lessons appear, as we grow and change. Do what you need to do to break through your resistance. Often that means simply seeing your resistance for what it is. Remember that the point of greatest resistance is often the place of greatest learning. And it's so true. And I can really get there in my physical body. But there's, yoga is always the place that I notice these things and the resistance that comes up. And it could be a pose and it shifts and it changes. Sometimes it's chair pose. Right now it's chair pose. For about a year it's been chair pose. <laughs> and, um, you know, it hasn't always been, but my body resists it. I want to move. I want to flow. I want to do anything but just stay and sit lower and breathe deeper. And sometimes I get there and I'm like, oh, I'm there. And then immediately I want to move. It's hard when that resistance comes up. to stay, to ground, to breathe. Those are the things to remember, the most important things. So when those sensations come up, when the resistance comes up, take time to notice it rather than react to it. Just so much easier said than done. In the moment it comes up, the immediate response, no, no, no thank you. Notice when that comes up. Take time to think about it. It's definitely valid at times and other times. Notice if it's coming up because it could be the very thing that you need the most. You need to sit deep in chair to learn what that feeling is all about. To break through the wall, to break through the why, to let yourself know you're worth the effort and that you can do it. And that's why I practice. And that's why we practice. So that when those things come up in the real world, we are less likely to react. Nobody's perfect, but we're less likely to react. So that being said, take some time for yourself. Ground your sit bones. Pull the crown of your head towards the ceiling. On your inhale, draw your shoulders up towards your ears. And then back and down your spine. Feel your shoulders falling away from your ears. Close up through the eyes. Take a deep inhale. Exhale.
Thank you, my friends. Thanks for supporting Mindful Minutes. This is super fun. Um, I'd love to share this book with people and what a beautiful way to do it. So again, thank you for your feedback. Um, I look forward to sharing the designs. There should be a bunch of links in the description here to check out. Um, and yeah, I will be back tomorrow. Thank you, friends. <laughs>